loose cigarettes who would buy the cigarettes, pay the taxes, and then break them up and sell them individually. They didn't want that to happen because they wanted to collect taxes uh, on each and every individual cell. So they started harassing him, and it turned into a confrontation because he said he wasn't wasn't selling them that day. It turns in, turned into a fight. He got choked to death. So we see that kind of pattern, whether it's in New York City or whether it's in Arkansas, that the police are really more interested, uh, Murphy, in, in enforcing policy enacted at the local level as kind of meter maids or tax collectors at the local level and not so much interested anymore in protecting people from violent crime because as we saw in new york if they report violent crime if they investigate that then they look bad as a police department on the fbi statistics yeah there's no doubt about that i mean what the police are doing nowadays is nothing more than uh revenue generation and uh, tyranny, you know, it's just straight up tyranny. I mean, if my son, who is 13 years old, wants to smoke cigarettes, I don't see what the problem is, to be honest with you. We do that in the trailer park all the time. Yeah. Now, what is yeah. the problem with that? Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Murphy. Uh, I want to move on to uh, VET and FEMA region number nine. You want to talk about the uh, TPP. We talked about that earlier. Go ahead, VET. Yeah, hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, I got you. Go yeah, ahead. I got you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I got a couple things. I know you guys have a big money bomb coming up, and I thought, hey, what if uh, what if the Info Wars started some kind of campaign to really kind of go against the sole tyrannical TTIP and TPP, et cetera, et cetera? And I have a great idea for you, but because we wouldn't want to lose the element of surprise with this, <laughs> I think I'd want to talk with you with you guys. Um, off the air about what what the idea is for a for a big like uh, an advertising a billboard campaign to basically kind of take on um, the Trans Pacific Partnership head on. Okay, great. Yeah, give that information to uh, our call screener, and uh, he'll email that to us. But. Uh yeah, that, that's not something we can't get a, a, a billboard campaign up before the money bomb because that's going to be just the next couple of days. But certainly uh, we all need to work against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm very happy to see that Donald Trump is using this as a, um, a campaign issue. He's met with Senator Sessions, who really knows what's going on and I think it's more than just a political issue. I, you know, at first, Donald Trump says, I, I don't agree with the TPP because I don't trust Obama to be the negotiator. Well, you know what? I don't trust any individual to negotiate this stuff and do it in secret, including Trump. If he becomes president, I don't think it should be done that way. We have a constitutional process. This is a treaty. We need to call it a treaty. We need to make sure that it has to pass by 67 senators, that the document itself is not negotiated and kept secret from the public as this is being done. This is being crafted over a number of years by corporate lawyers. We know that it involves far more than just trade. This involves many aspects of sovereignty. So I have an issue with a lot of these things. But one of the things that was encouraging that was that when Donald Trump met with Senator Sessions, he came out of the meeting and he said, hey, China can be added to this after the fact. And that's what, what Senator Sessions has been trying to explain to people, that this creates a transnational governments, a governance commission that can change the parameters of these agreements at will without any involvement from our elected leaders. We are not stakeholders in this. Understand that. When they talk about stakeholders, they're not talking about you and me. They're not talking about our representatives. That's why it is kept secret from our representatives because we have no stake in the future that they are planning and it needs to be stopped. And for whatever reason, I don't care if it's uh, for his political campaign or whatever, if he can lend his way to that, I'm all for that. I hope that he will stand up against the TPP. Uh, let's go to uh, Gene in Minnesota. Gene had a comment about super male vitality. Go ahead. Well, actually, I first wanted to say that I hope Alex knows what the gem he has in you. You are intelligent, oh, you. you're clear, you're concise, and you get more news across and have great stories. I'm just amazed. Um, I did have my own experience with the cop. In way back in 1984, where my husband and I, we were 22 years old, on the four-lane highway in the middle of North Dakota, and pulled up 
behind the state trooper that was going exactly the speed limit. Now, we were driving three and a half hours to get back to college, so we just pulled into the pass lane, you know, went a couple miles faster than he was going, carefully pulled over, and he immediately turned his lights on. My husband pulled over, and by the time he was up to the car window, he had his gun out. Wow. And, yes, he demanded that my husband... You know, provide documents. We did. Um, Hang on. we got to go to a commercial break. I want to hear how this ended. Uh, we're going to be right back. We're taking your calls. The number is uh, 800-259-9231. We'll be right back. In the next hour, in the fourth hour, a wrap-up, we're going to have Leanne McAdoo joining us. We're going to be talking to her in the next segment at the top of the hour about what she's going to be talking about. Uh, of course, it's going to be some subjects like automation, the irrelevancy of higher education and other things. Leanne is going to be doing the fourth hour wrap up. Before we go back to our callers, I just want to let you know that uh, we are now getting close to the end of the two week introductory uh, of the prices of the InfoWars Life Select products. It's a new line of products that we're carrying at InfoWars. You can go to InfoWarsSelect.com to see uh, what we have there. These are amazing introductory prices. We got a two week food supply here for $79.96. Two week food supply. A four-week food supply, $156. Absolutely amazing. If you want to get a balanced kit with breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, snacks, order a three-month or greater supply to get the greatest variety. Now, the food is packaged here in the United States. The food is grown here in the United States. There's no MSG, no GMO ingredients in this food. It's American food made in America, and the packaging is very key and vital to the fact that it can remain on your shelf for 25 years, tastes just as good 25 years from now as it does tonight. One of the things that makes this work, of course, is the military-grade barrier, this Mylar. Not all Mylar is created equal. This is a military-grade barrier, a barrier against light, oxygen, and moisture entering these pouches. And again, it's also in a very slimline tote uh, format for space saving, and you can reseal the ones that after you've opened them up, you can reseal them with a Ziploc bag. A great product, great packaging, new product with new low introductory prices, InfoWars Life Select Food, and you can find it at InfoWarsSelect.com. Now, just before the break, we were talking to Jean from Minnesota. She was telling us about being pulled over by a police officer. She said he was going the speed limit. They were in a hurry. They pulled past him about three miles an hour uh, faster than he was, immediately put on his lights, pulled him over, and then got out of the car with his gun drawn. So we wanted to hear what happened next, Jean. Well, I was just absolutely floored that he had his gun out. Um, I'd been ticketed many times for speeding and and have never seen this. But it was dark. It was night. In the middle of nowhere, no traffic. He asked my husband to get out of the car. He told me to stay where I was. And he had my husband walk around the back of the car to the trunk. I thought I was going to lose my husband, really. Mm, mm. I was scared to death. But um, he wanted to search the car for drugs? Is that it? No. <clears throat> he just gave him this big lecture of how dare he pass the state trooper and blah, blah, blah. He went on and on and on, gave him this big lecture. It was just intimidation. Wow. Wow. But to have his gun out. Well, we just saw that recently made- with a situation where a guy was filming a police officer. And you can see the police officer pulling his gun out and the guy saying, are you serious? You're pulling your gun? I'm standing here with a camera and you're pulling your gun out? And the guy says, what are you, some kind of constitutionalist or something? I mean, that type of thing happens. The other side of this, though, has also happened. I had an experience uh, years ago in Montana before uh, I think they've enacted a speed limit law. When we were going through it at the time, they didn't have a speed limit law. We were going because there's no speed limit and it's a large area. We were going well over 100 miles an hour. And I saw a cop, and we just went right past him. And I was surprised when he turned on the lights. <laughs> and he pulled us over and said, I didn't think you had a speed limit here. And he says, we don't have a speed limit. But I just want to let you know that there's some road construction up ahead. You might want to slow down a little bit. Have a good day. And it's like, wow, that's the way it ought to work in America. That's the kind of country we ought to have. 
I appreciate police officers like that. I appreciate states that don't have speed limits as well. Stay with us. Right after the break, we're going to talk to Leanne McAdoo, and she's going to tell us what's coming up in the fourth hour of the wrap-up of the InfoWars radio program with Alex Jones. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Radio Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Taking over for this fourth hour is Leanne McAdoo. She's going to do the news wrap-up. And joining us now in the other studio is Leanne McAdoo. Leanne, welcome. Hi there, David. Very excited to be back here in the captain's chair, getting ready for the InfoWars Overdrive Hour here. Very excited. Yeah, tell us what you're going to be talking about this next hour. Well, I kind of want to talk to uh, the callers and see what do they think we should be focusing on with this next debate. Uh, every election cycle, we always seem to be taken back and forth between the uh, identity politics and never really get to the real issues. Uh, a lot of things are happening. I mean, the economy is tanking. We're going to have a student loan debt crisis here as well. And I, I think a lot of people just, you know, they're getting a little bit distracted with some things that aren't aren't really important, which, of course, Absolutely. is by design. Absolutely. It's all about identity politics. If you look at that first debate uh, that Fox News did, it was all about them individually. Or they might have, if they were a governor, well, explain to us how you're going to fix the economy single-handedly from the White House. You know, how many jobs did you create? How many jobs are you planning on creating? You know, it's absolute insanity, uh, the, the level of questions that they have there. And, of course, there's many topics that are completely off limits. It's one of the reasons why I really want to see Rand Paul in these debates because he's the only one that's talking about so many issues of limiting government in terms of surveillance, in terms of the abuse of police power, trying to get back the rights that we possess as human beings that are explicitly recognized in the Constitution. Nobody else is even concerned about that, Leanne. Right. Well, and, and that's the other thing I do. I agree with you that there with Rand Paul. I mean, he's consistently been fighting against the surveillance state. So these are things that are on his record. It's not just, oh, hey, I'm running for president now. All of a sudden I care about the Constitution or I'm going to mm -hmm. give you some empty rhetoric here about our jobs, this and that. And he's been spoken out about the drone program and how are we going to use that here uh, on U.S. soil? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so. I think that that's something very important, which, of course, is the reason why they probably gave him about the last five minutes of the debate. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, it's just this media circus. They're going to go to whoever's going to get them the ratings and just divide the country even further. We're historically divided right now. Um, well, you know, celebrity big brother. Right. It really is celebrity big brother. We get to pick a new big brother a new dictator every four years. That doesn't make us free. That's not our form of government. But it has really become a TV reality show. Right. And I, I think we, we've seen the voters, especially Republicans, but also Democrats as well. I mean, there are many things that Obama promised to do that he didn't do. And uh, many things that, that his constituency did not want to see done. But, but look at the Republicans. Look at Boehner and McConnell. They said they were going to stop Obamacare. They were going to close the borders. We might have had a clue that they weren't going to do that since while they were in office, they never did a single thing along that direction. You're talking about Rand Paul. He's actually introduced legislation to do a lot of the things that he's talking about. But, of course, Boehner and McConnell had blocked legislation to do these sorts of things. And then they blocked it after they became after they were reelected. So not really a surprise there yet. The Republican voters seem to be surprised. And so when you see these guys come up and talk about some of these issues, uh, you really have to ask yourself, do they have the integrity to pull this off. Can I trust this person? To that level, it does matter something about their personal integrity. Exactly. Can you trust their word? Yeah, what you know, what's their record? And yeah. that's what, you know, don't don't give us empty rhetoric and lies. Or what what will you do? What have you done? Exactly. You know, and, and I mean, granted in the first debate Trump comes out and says that he's paid off politicians in the past. So I mean, yeah. that's his record. Yeah. And, and when we look at things like when we look at Ben Carson, for example, a lot of people uh, like Ben Carson, they feel like they can trust him because they have been lied to so much by politicians. They're very anxious to get somebody who is outside the political process. I understand that. I feel mm -hmm. that as well. But it isn't like he hasn't made statements in the past when he talked about Second Amendment rights. He said that uh, that was fine for people in the in the country, but people in the city didn't really need that. He favored mandatory Vaccination. uh, vaccinations. Right. That's a real warning signal that there's something fundamentally wrong about his understanding of individual liberty. Stay with us when we come back. Leanne McAdoo will be taking over the show, doing the fourth hour of wrap-up. 
Welcome back to the Alex Jones Radio Show. I'm your host, Leanne McAdoo, hosting this fourth overdrive hour here. And uh, I want to open up the phones now. I really would like to talk to the talk to you guys out there about what do you think is really important? What should we really be 